try again. There we are, get it to whistle. Everybody and uh, welcome along to a bit of a rough and ready video today. We're gearing up for Christmas, so it's not going to be the best thing ever. But I do have been purchasing a few more of these Hornby TTS digital sound decoders, and I'm quite taken with these. They're reasonably priced uh, for what you get, so I thought I'd try yet yeah, another one. I've got here. It's actually notionally for the S15 class. What you find with these is that Hornby have a fairly limited range. Uh, they do them for locomotives that uh, they make. And it's quite understandable, really. Uh, but they are a really good price. They're about a third of what you would pay for the uh, top-of-the-range sound chips. So I've been quite impressed with the ones that I've had so far. Uh, but so far, I haven't actually fitted any of them in the appropriate locomotives. But what I've got here, the S15 class, I thought that might be a fairly close sound to the Hornby Schools class. Now, my thinking behind this, and I'm probably going to be shot down in flames, is that um, it, it's really down to the whistle noise with these TTS decoders. That's really the standout thing. And uh, S15 class, it's a southern railway locomotive. It's actually originally, I think, a London and southwestern railway locomotive. But uh, we've got the schools class, and hopefully they'll sound mm, close enough that, uh, in my mind, I'll get away with it. But, you know, needs must when you're very limited on choice. So um, I think for the Southern uh, Railway locomotives, your choice from Hornby is either the S15 or the unrebuilt Merchant Navy class. And uh, I think that being a, a chain drive valve system really wouldn't be suitable for this. So what I'm going to try and do is get this fitted. I've got here, I don't think I'm going to need this, but it's a 21 to 8 pin adapter. Uh, but I have a feeling that the Hornby locomotive is going to be 8-pin, which the D TTS decoders are. And then I've also got uh, an assortment of jewelers type screwdrivers. And then I've also got some tape uh, just to stick things in place as needs be. Now, I know on the Class 20 video, uh, somebody did say that uh, the TTS decoders can get a bit warm and that this isn't the best to use, but it's what I've got. So needs must when you're basically improvising with what you've got to hand. And it has to be said that the TTS decoders come with a fairly generic speaker, which so far I've actually found isn't really suitable to fit in any of the classes of locomotives. I actually got the King sound chip and I couldn't fit it in the Hornby King because the speaker is just far, far too big. Um, so that's what you kind of get up against. But there's a supply issue with speakers and with chips at the moment. So uh, I'm told this is because the mobile phone industry uses the exact same chips, but for obviously different purposes. And they've just bought up the global supply. So if you can't find a shop that's already got what you need in stock, then unfortunately we're looking at around February time to uh, get resupplied. Um, it's just the way it goes. So until then, we just have to improvise. The first thing I'm going to do with this locomotive is um, I'm going to suppose that the uh, chip socket is in the tender because it does have a wired connector across there. And that normally signifies that the DCC uh, chip goes in the tender. And it's quite a big roomy size tender to some degree. Um, and that's important because... As you'll see, I've got the actual decoder chip out here and you can see that what we've actually got, there's the speaker and we can lose that plastic baffle if we need to. And I know that people are going to say to me, ah, but you're going to lose a lot of the bass if you do that. Well, needs must when you're improvising and I'd rather have a speaker making some sound than no speaker making no sound. So until such time as I can get... Uh, possibly a more suitable uh, speaker, 
then if needs be, I'm going to be quite happy to ditch the plastic surround just to get it fitted into here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and work out how I get the lid off this tender and then I'm going to uh, come back with the camera. Okay, so the tender top actually comes off pretty easy. There's uh, two screws uh, that go in there and then a couple of clips at the back. It's worth just getting a small screwdriver in there and just unclipping those. Then the whole top lifts off. But, 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 what you've got to watch out for is the entire chute for the coal is modelled on this, even though it's got an insert in which um, kind of fills it up. So sometimes when you get these tenders and they look really big, the space that's usable inside isn't. So it's just something to watch out for. So we're going to have to be a bit careful there. And the other thing as well I want to stress is you're going to have a cable. I'll just uh, see if I can move this so it's not in the shadow. But we've got a cable across there. And uh, you don't want to put undue stress on that uh, because if it does damage it, then you're going to get all sorts of problems. Uh, so just be very careful with that. And some of these earlier locomotives, the tender drawbar isn't permanently attached. So you can end up putting a lot of strain on that cable if you're not careful. Right, let's just move this round. And then I'm going to keep this tender top just here as a reference. The idea behind this is that I can decide where I'm putting various bits and pieces based on the space that's available. And my initial um, thoughts are that speaker's going to go at the back because it's, it's quite big, it's quite chunky, and might be able to just tuck the DCC chip just up the side there. Uh, just got to be careful that the screws that come through here don't end up chewing through some of the cables. So that's what I'm going to aim for. We can also see the 8-pin blanking plug on there. And there's also, there is a very large weight in the centre here uh, with a hole underneath. So what I might try and do is there's, there's a handy screw there. It may be possible to mount the speaker in its plastic surround uh, screwed on to that screw. So I'm going to see if I can get that all mounted up and see where I get to. So I'm going to put the camera down so I can use both hands to do this and then I'm going to come back and film progress. You just see here quickly that uh, I've got the uh, blanking plate off and we're going to look very carefully. We've got pin one marked there so we need to match that with pin one on the chip and what we find with these is that the orange wire goes to pin one. It is marked on that board so we've just got to make sure that we get those lined up. The other thing as well is that don't try and force these. You can very easily bend or break these pins. And uh, you know, if, if it feels like it's not seating properly, the best thing to do is to just give it a wiggle. Um, don't push too hard. You're going to have to put a little bit of force in just to get it down. But um, you don't want to go so gung-ho that you run the risk of snapping or bending those pins. So I'm going to go ahead now and get this all attached. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get this uh, plugged in and then, first things first, I think a test is probably on in order, just to make sure that everything works. Uh, what I have had with the Hornby Class 50, I've got a fairly early one, and that's got an issue, and I want to make sure that that issue isn't persisting to this. So I'll plug it in. It should be on address 3. They default to that when they come from the shops. Um, and we'll just see if we get the sound out and that everything is all tickety-boo. So I'm going to go ahead and get that plugged in. I'm going to need both hands to do that. Okay, we've got it on the track and as you can see on the controller here, uh, we've got it set in as number three. That's the default. It's all hanging out loose there, but really this is just to make sure it's all going to work. So there we go. So we've got the sound going on there and let's just... don't want it to go too far because it'll just drag those cables so um, let's have a look at some of these different sounds what you find on these TTS chips it seems is that a lot of the different sounds between the different locomotives is, is more down to the whistle than anything else 
And yeah, I can hear that's different to some of the others that I've had. But the other noises, uh, like that hissing of steam and the shoveling of coal, they seem fairly common across the uh, the different TTS chips. But, you know, for the price, I'm quite happy with that. So what we can see here is it does work. Oh, there we are. I, I don't know why it occasionally doesn't work. Um, who knows? Uh, but everything does seem to be working just fine. So I'm going to turn that off. And the steam noise fades away. And now we've got the job of trying to fit all of that gubbins into there and get the tender top back down snug. So um, let's take a crack at doing that. OK, it's taken an awful lot of working out. But what we've got here speaker had to come out of its baffle gosh that's quite a strong magnet there so just got to be quite careful about how close that gets to the chip it's um i'm gonna put a bit of tape across that just hold it in place you can see it sort of wants to slide itself out the chip itself uh is on top of all its wire which should help just insulate it from that uh, socket and that fits widthways right at the back of the tender and as long as that speaker is as far back as we can get it there, then the lid uh, does appear to have just enough clearance to all squeeze in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape that speaker to the weight, get the lid back on, and then we're going to do another test and just make sure that the magnet from that speaker isn't going to cause any great issue for this chip just being that close. Uh, there's nothing in the manual that I can see about the the speaker affecting the chip but um really i'm i'd be happier if there was a little bit of a space between those two but it's really difficult to get that into here and i suppose what i need to do is work out the furthest i can move that speaker just to the left there um, and still get the, be able to get the lid down so again i need two hands to do this so i'm going to take that in and then I'm going to see about getting the lid on, and then we'll get a final test. Does seem to all be working. Uh, I've managed to get the lid back on, and uh, try again. There we are, get it to whistle. And the sound's getting out, so I'm quite happy with that actually. I'm just going to run it the other way. Let's just see, go on there. Oh, I think that the tender and the locomotive may have just come apart there. Uh, let's just see. Yeah, this is something you've got to be very careful about. That the locomotive and tender don't uh, kind of end up just being pulled along by that wire. So I'm going to see if I can sort that. But certainly what we've got here is a really nice sound fitted schools class at um, quite a cheap price, fairly cheap, £35 I paid for these. And they are really good. Uh, the class 20 especially, if you haven't seen that video, go back and take a look at that. I was really pleased with that. But uh, some of these steam ones are really good as well. And I have to say they offer really good value for money. Not really happy with the sound of that. I'm wondering if the magnetism from the speaker is causing an issue. I'm going to try it again. Maybe it could just be dirt on the track. How dirty is that? Not very, actually. I'm just going to give that another whirl. If there is a problem, I'm going to have to open that tender back up. And it does feel with a lot of these sound installations like you're really stuffing things in there. I'm not sure that that is the best. Uh, but certainly when this locomotive was new... Um, sound chips I don't think even existed on the market so this is very much a trying to fit in around uh, older models okay well um, it seems that it was just dirty track so, so it's always a bit frightening when you're squeezing all this electronics into one of these things but we do appear to be working
Well, there's certainly a lot of play value in one of these, so I'll give it that. Uh, what I'm going to do now is reprogram it. So I'll turn the sound off. Uh, I don't know whether it's too bothered about it. But uh, program on main and loco number three. What address do we want? Well, 903 is the number on that loco. So let's see now. 903. Enter. Uh, start voltage. Actually, to be honest, it seems to be responding pretty well with the settings that are in there at the moment. So I'm going to leave them be. So we're going to change loco 903 and enter. And that should now mean that, yeah, there we go. Well, I hope this video has been informative to you. Don't forget to like this video, share it too, and also subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, you take really good care of yourself and normal service should be resuming in the new year. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Mark McShane, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph and Anthony Hunt. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.